Welcome to ToddFun.com, where I do what I think is fun. This is part two of the hot tub controller uh, rework, or essentially hack. Hack over. I'm going to hack in a new type of controller for this for temperature. So as you can see, this is a very convoluted Jarvik 7 bypass surgery going on here. That's to simulate this control board, which does have some functionality that we do plan on reusing. Um, and we want to see how that's working and we want to test that our, our controller hack uh, for temperature will work. Some of the things you'll see is over here you'll see this is the interface that normally is at the tub for, for person changing the temperature and turning the jets high and low. That's currently jacked in through this RJ12 six line connector so we can communicate with this control board that's usually under the tub. Well, we've, I've taken a lot of notes on how this thing works, um, how the wiring works uh, for that head controller, uh, how the pick was wired up and working in the head controller, how the uh, temperature switches and temperature sensors and flow sensors were working, uh, also how the wires all hooked up, how the pump hooked up, how the heater hooked up, how the power hooked up, just so that this thing was fully understood. Uh, now I also uh, looked into uh, the exact wiring colors and made sure that was all wired up correctly again. How, how it was kind of controlling and talking with the micro. Uh, exact specs on how the two temperature probes were working. Um, let's see, the uh, temp probe ohms drop with higher temps. I tested that, so as the temperature goes up, the ohms, the 33, ohm, 3, 33 kilo ohms goes down. Um, goes down. These wires all here are the uh, essentially the temperature for the tub, the temperature for the heater, and the temperature, I mean the, uh, the flow. And so the, the green is currently got a 27 kilo ohm resistor jumper across it. So that's basically saying, hey, the tub is ice cold. The yellow has a 27, ohm, 27 kilo ohm jump, resistor jumper across it. That basically says, hey, the temperature of the heater is really low, so it's not overheated. This is essentially the high limit uh, sensor for the heater. If it gets too hot, it shuts off the system because it's monitoring that. And then this is the uh, flow, and it goes from a really high resistance to almost no resistance uh, as that flow increases. Now I'm just going to unhook this like that. So that's going to simulate that the flow isn't happening. The reason we want to do that is we want to go ahead and apply power to this board and see that the low flow, the low power pump relay comes on. So the pump would go into low flow. Then the next thing that the circuit would test is that the flow is there before it would allow any heaters to come on. Uh, this really does nothing because this is for a different tub that has three speeds and we only have two speeds on this tub. So the low and the high are the only speeds that will ever get used. This is just for temper this is just for heating the tub. This is a proofing coil, which really comes in handy because now, because most of the circuits is still working, except we're not able to change the temperature nor temperature range, nor are we allowed to turn on the jets, we can still use this controller in its safety features, meaning that this relay is a high limit relay. It won't, this relay gives power to this relay. This relay is controlled by the fact that there's no over temperature going on on the yellow, the high temperature relay. So the high temperature relay gets and says it's too hot, it'll turn off this relay. Or if the flow says there's no flow, this microcontroller will turn off this relay. Either one of those safety features will turn off power to the heater relay. So essentially that will still function in this thing. We'll be able to let that continue working and hack into this thing for the controls we want to do. And the safety feature of, of the high temperature limit and flow limit, flow control, will still exist with this relay. Uh, so what we're going to test then is that when we apply, apply power to these gray lines here, that the machine will sense it, will sense that it needs demand for heat, and will turn on the flow for low. And at that point in time, this relay should kick in, and we should see a voltage come up on, on this fluke down here. It should say 20, 124 volts are being applied to that relay. 
the power, the 120 volts on these gray lines, um, uh, they are uh, hooked up to my, my isolation transformer. So that at least gives me some safety. So let me go ahead and hook that up to my isolation transformer and turn that on. So she's powering up and, well you actually saw it even just happen right there. It powered up and it says it thinks it's 82 degrees because uh, that's the resistor I put in. And that means it's got demand for, it needs a demand for heat, which means it wants to turn the low pump on. The low pump was hooked up over here and you saw that click on, meaning there's 124 volts from my isolation transformer going to this relay now. But the machine knows it wants to heat. It just has the wrong temperature. So if I take this here and I move it over to the heater, we shouldn't have any voltage at the heater. The reason we don't have any voltage at the heater is because we haven't hooked up the flow sensor. So let's go ahead and hook up the flow sensor here. And that should proof out to the micro. And then that should click on if I got this figured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it clicked on. I just had to make sure I had a good connection. And so now you see that clicked on, meaning, oh, I proofed out that I have flow and I proofed out that I'm not over temperature. That means this relay clicked on and this relay clicked on. So both these relays are now engaged. We now just have to lift a pin on this Darlington uh, controller right here. Uh, there's a couple inputs. The Darlington controller, I mapped out how that was controlling the, uh, the relays because that's what we're ultimately going to replace is we're going to replace, we're going to hack into that. We're going to hack into that guy right there. That's an, uh, an SN75488N. It crosses over to some, it cross checks to some other dar standard Darlington controllers. And, uh, and essentially what, what, what they do is, is they just control relays, is, is what they're used for a lot. You'll have, uh, on this side, you'll have a, a ground, and you'll apply five volts to any of these pins. And by applying five volts to this pin, you're basically providing through a Darlington resistor, you're turning on this, on this pin over here to common down here. And so they go straight across. So if you put five, five volts here, this pin comes on. You put five volts here, this pin comes on. Five volts here, this pin comes on. And so you just have to, if you want to turn on a relay number one, two, three, four, you apply five volts there, et cetera. And you just have to know how that maps out on the board. And so I did do that work. Um, by just checking it out and it came out to if I have 5 volts to any of these pins, 1 through 5, I can control uh, the relay for the pump low speed, the pump high speed, the temperature high limit relay. And the importance of that is if that, if that, that is going to continue to be controlled by the micro on this board. I'm not going to take away that control. So I'm leaving pin 14 to be controlled by the micro and what it does is it completes uh, the uh, heater relay, meaning you won't get any power to this relay if 14 doesn't prove out and be on. I won't bother with that. I'll let the microcontroller on that board do that. I'll just control pin 13 by applying voltage to pin 4, uh, 5 volts to pin 4. I can turn the heater on and off. That heater cannot come on if the microcontroller on the board is not turning on 14 by applying five volts to three, it will do that. It will continue proofing out the fact that it's not overheating. So that's an advantage. I like that. And then the final thing is the, there's a pump medium speed, uh, which is not even an option for this uh, hot tub. So it's never even used. So I can just clip this one. It doesn't matter. So essentially I'll be clipping pin one for the pump low. I'll clip and rewire pin two for pump high. And I will clip and rewire pin four for uh, controlling the heater. Let's see that currently working uh, on here as is, uh, so you can have a better understanding of that by just watching these uh, meter controls. So I've applied power again from my isolation transformer, and we have uh, the resistors on the two temp sensors saying that it uh, is it, it demands heat. That's just saying the temperature is using a substitute te temperature sensors. And then the proofing out for the flow control is still disconnected. What that means is this is not reading any volts right now. 
uh, because it's hooked up to the uh, heating, element, heating element. If I hooked up over to the low flow, we should see there's 124 volts. Um, that's because once you plug it on, it immediately goes, I need demand for heat. Now, if I change the resistor values on these temperature sensors to make it seem like it was hot enough, then this would turn off. Uh, but we're going to control that ourselves, so we're not worried. Just to show that uh, Darlington uh, transistor now, I will show that, uh, as we noticed in, in, a, in, in the controller, that uh, was it pin 1 goes to the low speed. So if I go from looking at this voltage here, we should see the 5 volts from pin 1 to pin across pin 1. So pin 1 has 5 volts on it. And then that's basically going to show that we have uh, that we're powering that relay. So if I went from common to pin 1 on this side, you're going to see there's 15 volts going across holding that relay in. Now, if we did that same check for the temperature, which is which is heaters number 4 and 13. So if I check the temperature, it should be off right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. So there's no voltage there controlling that relay. Likewise, there's no signal over here. 1, 2, 3, 4. If I go right there, there's no voltage on pin 4. So pin 4 is not turning on the heater relay. And hence, if we come over here, we shouldn't see any voltage. But now I'll go ahead and I'll proof out the flow control, which normally we're going to be in charge of this, so that doesn't the flow control is going to be eliminated from the circuit when I, my hack is done, because my hack is not going to be able to continue using the flow control, because that's being controlled. Now we'll watch this should proof out and turn on. There, it proofed out with the micro, it turned on voltage, now that relays on. That's the heater basically saying, okay, I want heat, I have flow, turn on the heater. Uh, we, like I say, we're going to lose this because we have to control the temperature. We have to be in control of this relay. We can't use this proof out of flow anymore. We're just buggered if the flow has a problem. But at least we still have the over temperature over here. If we have an over temperature condition, it'll shut itself off. So that we can leave. And so now, because that relay is engaged, this Darlington should have 15 volts at pin 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. So we should have 15 volts right there. And that should give us 5 volts on pin 4 on this side. Right there. And there's the 5 volts, 4, well, 4 and a half. And so that means we do understand fully how this is being controlled. We don't have to control these relays directly. We can simply lift those pins on this Darlington and apply the 5 volts through the, the Chinese temperature control unit and turn on this Darlington relay controller and it'll do its normal job with these relays. And we don't have to re-engineer the wheel here, we just have to hack into this. So let's do those lifts and show those tests working on the back of that Darlington control array. You're going to see I've cut some traces. I've this is pin 1, this is pin 2. Pin 2 has been cut over here. I just used my Dremel tool to grind out the uh, solder or the uh, circuit trace. Pin 3 we're leaving. Pin 4 is ground out here. Pin 5 is ground out here. And we're, we don't ever use 5. 5 is for controlling the medium uh, speed for the jets and there is no medium speed on the motor at all. Uh, pin 1 is cut on the front. Right, uh, right here, pin one is cut, and I have also, it's kind of hard to see, I've kind of roughed up the, it's got sort of a protective coating on this um, board for, because it's in a harsh environment really. Um, it's got a conformal coating kind of, so I ground off that coating on the first four pins, though I'm only controlling pin one, two, and four so I want to make sure I can solder some control pins to these now that 5 volts can only get to these three pins when I control it. I also cleared off some of the conformal coating here because there's 5 volt supply right here, which is what I'm going to tap into for the control. Let's test that now. Pin 1 on this Darlington should engage that relay and turn on the voltage. 
Here we go, we got 120 volts. Whoops, gotta get right there. 120 volts gets across that relay. That relay is kicking in. Now, if we went down to that high speed motor, it's currently not on, and that's pin two on this Darlington, so we put five volts there. And there's 120 volts at the high speed motor control. And lastly, we got nothing at the heater, and so we can turn on the heater with pin four. And there we go, 125 volts at the heater. So by using the five volts through our, uh, essentially our Chinese controller, uh, we'll be able to control those relays and or our override switch. Well, let's call that the end of part two, just to keep these kind of short and enjoyable. The next video, I'm gonna, I put together my little Chinese temperature control unit and uh, we'll show testing this and, uh, and, and its functionality along with hooking up the uh, hot tub controller to this uh, heater craft. It's, it's got a heater coil in there. Um, this is the guts of a, a curry coffee maker that, that just got clogged up with sediment. So I tore it apart and kept a lot of things out of it. This is one of the things I thought might come in handy and now it's going to come in handy. We'll be able to drop the temperature probe in there. We'll be able to hook up the controller to this. This will be able to turn the system on and off uh, based on the temperature it gets to. We don't have to have hot tub temperatures, but we could have whatever temperature we want. Um, and then we should be able to see it working. And if it works with this, it could care less if it's this or if it's controlling a, controlling a hot tub. So next video, thumbs up if you liked it and see you in part three.